2015 was the worst year of my life. And that's saying a lot because I've had many difficult days since then. I had just finished a master's program that was supposed to open up opportunities for me. But try as I may, I couldn't get a job. I'd always been an overachiever of sorts, so struggling to find direction and make any meaningful progress in my career was a hard hit. I even got let go from two different part-time gigs because they didn't think my work was up to par. Needless to say, I felt like I was failing at life. If you've ever been in a place where you feel stuck or left behind in life, this episode is for you. Let's get into it. You're listening to the Driven Introvert Podcast, the place to be for dreamers, doers, and entrepreneurs who are ready to birth the dreams, callings, and ideas the Lord has placed in their hearts. Do you sense that God is calling you to step out and do something new, but you're held back by fear and uncertainty? Do you struggle with believing that you can do great things because of your quiet, reserved, and introverted nature? Welcome here. I'm Remy Roy, your host and founder of ShePacked.com. I'm an author, an entrepreneur, a creative, and a committed trier. I'm here to help you get unstuck and make progress on your God idea. Let's go. Hi, friend. I'm so happy to be back with a new season of the podcast. I'm in a season of my life where I'm doing a lot of reflecting, and it's really encouraging to think through the really hard things the Lord has brought me through, just the difficult situations I've had to go through in life. And I want to offer some encouragement to you should you find yourself in a difficult place right now. Have you ever been in a place where one area of your life is not going according to plan, and that makes you question everything else? like you catastrophize and blow everything out of proportion. I mean, surely not being able to get a job means that there's something wrong with you on a deeper level, right? I know it sounds silly and really ridiculous when you think about it. When you zoom out on these wild thoughts, it's like, what are you even talking about? But in the middle of a tough season, you start to believe them. And when you believe them, you commit probably the most unfortunate error in this precarious situation is you ignore where to work in. We forget the small and big victories and we cease to be thankful. 2015 for me was the absolute worst. I couldn't get a job and when I finally got them, I couldn't keep them. I kept trying things that did not work. An e-commerce business, blogging, publishing books. And I was depressed. I was lonely and frustrated. Those were very hard days for me. The few friends I had would be at work during the day and too busy and tired to hang out in the evenings. And I had all this time to myself. And I had so much time to really think about how horrible my life felt. Many nights I cried myself to sleep. I prayed during the season, but they were mostly prayers of frustration. And I don't think they were rooted in complete faith and trust in God. I have spent a lot of time reflecting on this season of my life because I never want to feel that way again. I never want to feel out of control, borderline depressed, lonely, and forgotten. If I ever encounter such like a similar ton of events in my life, I want to be in a much healthier place to handle the disappointment. Notice I didn't say I never want to experience those things again, even though I really don't. But life happens sometimes, right? I think the main issue wasn't that life happened to me. The issue was my thoughts and how I approached this season of my life. The negative, spiraling, woe is me thoughts, it was out of control. I've also reflected on this season of my life because I know that that's one of the ways that I find answers and learn from my experiences. And what have I learned? Well, that's the crux of what I want to share here today. What do you do when you feel stuck or left behind in life? For me, there are two major steps I think are really crucial here. Number one, you need to reframe your perspective. What do I mean by that? Perspective is how you see things, right? And usually it's colored by your past experiences or your beliefs. You know, the things that people have said, the things that have happened, whether it was good, mostly because it was bad, and what you believe about maybe yourself, about God, or about the situation. If your experiences in the past have been difficult and things haven't worked out the way you expected, and we're going to talk about expectation in a minute because I believe it's kind of like a double-edged sword. But if things haven't worked out the way you expected, it's easy to catastrophize and be negative in the way you assess your life. That's when we say things like, oh, I'm stuck or I feel stuck. Or we say everyone's moving on and up and I just feel left behind, right? 
or I feel like people around me are succeeding at work, like even online, and they're they're not struggling, and I am struggling. You see the glass as half empty, maybe even completely empty sometimes. And this kind of way of thinking and living, it's, it's draining. I was there. I felt this way. Also, your beliefs are very significantly just impactful to your perspective. If you believe that things should work out on the first try, you're going to be disappointed when they don't. If you believe that things happen to others that can never happen to you, you're going to be disillusioned when you go through the hard stuff. It's just the way it is. So how do you reframe your perspective? I think it's important to think about it this way. You must separate the assessment of your current situation from your past experiences, whatever those might be. And also, you need to deeply examine your beliefs. For me, here's how I did that. So in 2015, I lost two part-time gigs and I was back to being unemployed, right? I could have wallowed in that season. Well, I did wallow (laughs) for a bit, but then I got back up. I knew that God could not have brought me this far to leave me with no help, no prospect, and no future. Like there had to be something he had going on behind the scenes. He had to be doing something about my life, about my future, that I wasn't seeing or feeling or understanding at that time. Here's where you acknowledge and deeply believe that God is the author of your life. You have to believe that every decision you make should be filtered through his word and every experience he allows is for your good and his glory. You've got to believe this with every fiber of your being. If you don't believe this, it might be because you haven't surrendered your life to the Lord, which is fine if you're not there yet, but I hope you consider learning more about what that means and how to understand the sacrifice made for you by God, you know, understand the sacrifice that God made for you by sending Jesus to give his life for you and me. So either that, you know, you haven't met Jesus or you're a Christian who has accepted Christ as your savior, but not yet made him Lord of your life. And those are two different things, a discussion for another time. So for me, I reframed my perspective by going back to what I know about God so that I could accept that my past sad and difficult experiences didn't have to dictate my future. And what do I know about God? Number one, he's a good father. He's a good, good father. Matthew 7 verses 9 to 11 says, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? That's like, that's amazing right there. Number two, he has great plans for me. Jeremiah 29, 11. We all know this. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. I know he said this to his people way back then who were in exile, but I know enough of God to know that this is his heart for his children even today. Number three, nothing can separate me from his love. Romans 8 verses 31 and 35. It says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. Guys, this is what I stand on and believe. Every experience in my life is filtered through these words. That gives me hope. The second way I reframed my perspective was to examine my beliefs. One underlying belief I had to dissect was the sense that my expectation in any situation is closely tied to the outcome of that situation. What do I mean by that? When I wrote my first book, I was so excited to release that book, right? And which is expected. It was my first book. But thinking about it now, there was a curious kind of hyper positive expectation I had that didn't serve me well in the end. If you are creative putting out any kind of work into the world, this will probably resonate with you. I'd been working on my book for months, writing after work, editing on weekends, crafting characters, deleting, rewriting, all the things. And finally, I was ready to release my book. And in my mind, the world was waiting for this book, right? Surely people were going to be impressed that I had written a novella all by myself. 
They would be excited to get to know my characters and be immersed in their world. And as soon as I dropped the news that a book was available, they will flock to it and buy copies, you know, all the things. My expectations were so high, so incredibly high, like so unreasonably high that the letdown was massive. It was like hurling like a glass vase, a delicate glass vase from the 20th floor of a building or something. My expectations were shattered in a million pieces. So I know that it it sounds dramatic, but you get the point. That's how I felt. I launched my book to cricket. It was so disappointing. What happens when we tie our expectations to a particular specific outcome? We say things like, oh, I want 100 sales of my first product in 24 hours or maybe a thousand downloads of my podcast in one week, or an offer letter on this particular job with these particular sets of benefits and nothing else would do. More often than not, the results are disappointing, and we have to pick up our shattered expectations off the floor. Sometimes maybe even our ego and our pride too. Hopefully in those moments, we're not looking for our faith in that pile of broken pieces. So all of this to say, After those less than exciting book launches, and yes, there have been quite a few, I felt left behind in life. Like I was stuck in a cycle of near misses while my friends who stayed in corporate were becoming managers and directors and doing big things. But thankfully, I learned to fix my perspective by fixing that belief that my expectations have to match the outcome I want or nothing else would do. I learned to see things as kind of an experiment, like what would happen if I gave my all to this venture and, you know, see what happens. And I get it. If making an income or to pay your rent, you know, next month is your goal, you don't have time for experiment. But hopefully you see where I'm going with this. I believe that expectation is kind of like a double-edged sword. Yes, you should be expectant. You should have goals and work towards them. But learn to do your best and then trust God with the outcome. Hi friends, do you have an idea you've been thinking about for a while, but you're unsure how to start? Maybe it's a business, a book you want to write, a community you want to build, or a new career path you want to take so you can stop dreading Mondays and be more fulfilled at work. Maybe you have a sense that God is calling you to step out and do something new, but you've been held back by fear, uncertainty, or a lack of clarity. I've experienced all these feelings at different stages of my life, and the lessons I've learned have helped me be more confident to take steps in faith when I know God is prompting me in a new direction. I know what it feels like to feel stuck, so I want to help you get unstuck and make progress on your God ideas. That's why I created a free resource that will get you started. Think of it as a guided reflection journal that will lead you through questions, prompts, and ideas meant to help you sort through what is holding you back so you can make progress on that book, that business, or that thing you want to do. I encourage you to get it today. Visit shepacked.com slash getunstock to download it for free. It's time to step out in faith and pursue your dreams, my friend. That's shepacked.com slash getunstock, or you can click the link in the show notes. Now let's get to the podcast. All right, so we're talking about what to do when you feel left behind in life. And that's number one. You need to reframe your perspective. Number two, make stuff. Make stuff and keep making stuff. What do I mean by this? When you feel stuck, the best way to get unstuck is to keep moving. And the best way I have found to keep moving is to focus on whatever your hand finds to do. Go do it. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 7 says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Guys, we're all going to die and leave this earth someday. I don't mean to be morbid, but this is not a dress rehearsal. This life is all we've got. And Solomon is saying, just go do something, please. Have you ever asked the question, what am I supposed to be doing with my life again? Like, sure, I have a job and it pays the bills, but is that all? Sometimes these existential questions can drive you crazy, but I promise you it doesn't have to be something you overthink. If you're committed to glorifying God with your life, just focus on the next thing that calls to your heart. Now, I know at this point your question might be, well, how do I know it's God's will? This thing that I want to try or this thing that I want to do or that I'm dreaming about, how do I know it's God's will? And to that, I say three things. Number one, is it legal? Let's get that out of the way. 
We don't commit crimes here, right? Let it be legal, please. Number two, is it God honoring? Will it bless other people and point back to God? Number three, do you like it? Do you have the skills to do it? Or at least, are you able to learn what you need to do it? If it checks all three boxes, I say go ahead and do it. And trust that if God doesn't want you to be doing that, he will redirect you as long as you stay connected to him. And that's the crucial part. I think a lot of times we overthink our next steps and for good reason, right? We don't want to misstep. We want to be aligned and do the right thing. But in the process of trying to be aligned, we overthink ourselves out of every opportunity. So this is one sure way to get unstuck when you feel left behind in life. Make stuff, do stuff, build stuff, organize stuff. Start that furniture reclaiming hobby thing that you've always wanted to do. Start painting again. Write that article. Start that blog. Do the YouTube thing if you really want to do it. Start the business. Register the nonprofit. Volunteer. Just go do the thing. I run a mentorship program where I walk women through pursuing their God ideas. And some of the big issues we talk about and try to tackle are overthinking and a fear of failure. It can be paralyzing, but you don't have to stay there. Take a bold step of faith, knowing full well that this step will surprise you. It will not be exactly what you expect, but that's fine. If it's better than you expect, hey, pleasant surprise. And if it doesn't measure up, no biggie. It's an experiment. There's something bigger and better on the horizon. Just keep it moving. I think there's something about creating and serving others that takes the focus of negative patterns of thought and helps you engage your skills and your purpose. Don't worry about getting things right the first time. Very few people ever do. I love this quote by Sean McCabe. He says, everyone has to do many things before they figure out their one thing. You have to try and do and pursue many things until you find out what you want to be known for. So what should you be focused on right now? It's just trying things, learning, experimenting, and making the best of whatever season of life you're in right now, no matter how hard it is. During that hard season of my life, I kept blogging. I started a business, I organized workshops, and I did so many other things. Most of them didn't really go anywhere, but the lessons I learned are still with me today. So let's do a quick recap. We've been talking about what to do when you feel left behind in life. Two points to note. Number one, reframe your perspective. Do this by separating your current perspective from your past experiences and then deeply examine your beliefs. What do you believe about yourself, about God, about situations? Number two, make stuff. Try things. Don't be afraid to experiment. Fail, learn, and then grow. The more you do these things, the more alive and on purpose you will feel. So. What would you like to try today? What's your next best thing? I'd love to hear from you. Have you ever felt this way? Left behind, forgotten, like everyone else is going places and you're stuck? Are you feeling this way right now? I hope this encourages you. Send me an email. I'd love to hear your story and encourage you on your journey. And if you're ready to make stuff, let me know what you'd like to try next. Do you want to write a book? volunteer more? Do you want to start a business, teach a class? Whatever it is, I'd love to hear your ideas. Also, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you've ever gotten any value from this podcast, or if this episode encouraged you, please leave us a five-star rating, and if you're feeling generous, a review in your podcast app. It takes just a couple of seconds, but it really goes a long way in helping us to share more encouragement and purpose strategies to driven introverts out there. So once again, if you enjoy this episode, please take a moment to leave us a five-star rating and a brief review on what you took from this episode. I will be very, very grateful. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoy this conversation, please take a moment to follow or subscribe to the podcast. I'd also love your feedback on this episode. You can scroll down on your app and click write a review. I'd love to read your takeaways from this conversation. As always, Don't forget to take courage, trust God, and go pursue your big ideas. See you next time. The Driven Introvert is produced by ShePack.com and Remy Roy, with support from Candice Zakaria and Aisha Tolarewaju. Want to ask a question or share a comment on a future episode? Click on the link in the show notes to record your question in a voicemail.